Hey everyone, Sean Frangella here for MotionTutorials.net with a new Cinema 4D quick tip about how we can use different settings in track properties to create this sort of looping animation with only using two keyframes so we can keep things clean. So this lets us loop animations and this could even be further applied to multiple keyframes if we had something like this ghost looking shape. So it can be a really useful thing to know in Cinema 4D without having to create a bunch of repetitive and redundant keyframes. So let's talk about how to set this up. If I had a quick sphere, let's just say it's that bouncing ball animation, but we don't want to have an endless amount of keyframes. So we could set a keyframe for the bottom position on Y and then put it at like 15 frames and bring it up and that'll get it going from the bottom to the top. Now you might be inclined to just take those do a quick copy and paste and paste and paste. And we don't want to do that because we want to do a better job and make things a little easier on ourselves. So how we can adjust this is if we select these first two keyframes and go to window timeline and we can take a look at the F curves. This is our animation easing and speed over time. And if we click on this, we actually get some different properties down here in our attributes, we get our track properties, and this is where we can push things a little further. So this deals with what happens before and after our keyframe. So by default, it's just constant because we would assume if we have animation, it's gonna be still before keyframes and then just stop after our keyframes. But we can really adjust these to do some different things, including looping this. So if we change this from constant to continue, for an example, it doesn't look like anything happens, but if we had this curve kind of twisted and before and after sent to continue, you can see if it's not totally stopping, it'll actually continue. So maybe if something was kind of coming into animation, then it could keep going and it would just infinitely keep moving at that speed. So you can see it's kind of like a balloon that's floating away. Now the other ones are repeat. So if say after this, we wanted this to repeat, and in this case, this one doesn't really make that much sense because it's just repeating the animation. This might be useful if we had an animation that's not just bouncing back and forth. Maybe it does something like this, and we want to loop this. We could use that for this sort of thing, so kind of some weird bouncing thing where the timing is different from the beginning to the end. We could have it be offset repeat, so let's say we just have our two keyframes and I'll delete that one and say it kind of bounces from the ground and goes up. Well, what offset repeat will do is just continue that animation, but continue to, in this case, go up vertically. So what we can do with any of these is before or after turn up the repetitions and play, and we can see that's what that black line represents that keeps going. So again, maybe if like a balloon is kind of floating away slowly and what's nice is we only need to adjust these two keyframes then it would keep going but let's get to the point let's talk about that kind of ping pong looping so if you're familiar with after effects or seen my other tutorials on after effects expressions you can do things like looping and loop ping pong to have it bounce back and forth well we don't have to get into any fancy espresso or anything like that to do that in cinema 4d what we can do is click on our object when we have our timeline open and take a look at these track properties. And for after, we're gonna change it to oscillate. And what that's gonna do is basically bounce back and forth so it'll look like it's looping those two keyframes. And what's nice about this, if I just play through, is we only have to adjust this one curve and then that's gonna change our entire animation. So we can really push the timing and the speed of this entire animation only by adjusting this one curve. So it keeps everything really clean. And if we wanna make each bounce longer, we can just drag out the keyframe. And if we wanna make that animation curve maybe a little sharper and snappier, we only gotta change the one and it will keep going. And we can see how easy that makes everything if we're doing this. We don't have a set of something like 20 or 30 or who knows how many keyframes to kind of keep this bouncing. We only need this one. And if we want to take this a little further, if we look at this second example, we have kind of this ghosty ghoul looking shape where there's actually three keyframes looping. And then 
on this oscillate setting, and then it kind of drops back to that. So let's go to that project we just had. And what we can do here is use this to talk about a couple little extra bonus tips with F curve. So we have this one curve on our timeline now. And if we wanted to add another keyframe, we could do a couple of things. We could click our sphere and make a keyframe. Since this is just a spline line, which is kind of the same as any of our pen tool lines, we could also command click and then we could adjust this. So what's happening here is left to right is time and up and down on our Y axis is our value. So if we kind of move this, we could see it's gonna go up a little and then based on our F curves kind of snap up in a different way and then it would kind of go back down. So we could adjust this further by pulling these curves a bit and if we want a little more control over this, we can use some modifier keys. If we hold shift, it's only going to pull one side of that. So if we wanted to kind of break it and have it maybe overshoot a little, and then we get that little zippiness. If we want to adjust kind of all these a little further on our keyframe properties, so let's select those first, we can unlock this lock tangent links, and that's going to let us pull these even further. And then if we wanted to use some more modifier keys to kind of adjust this differently, we could hold command and we can see even if I go up or down with the mouse, it's only adjusting the left time and right time. So it's not impacting our value. It's just kind of stretching that out or compressing it over time. And if I hold alt, it's going to do the opposite. You can see if I pull left or right, it's not expanding our time, but we can kind of shift our values. So we can, Take a look at our track properties to create some looping and oscillating animation, really keep things clean, keep things to a simple set of keyframes. And then on our track properties, just up the repetitions if we want it to loop for a number of times or infinitely. And we can kind of adjust our F curves using different modifier keys like Shift, Alt, or Option. So it's a really good quick tip. It'll get you animating better and smarter in Cinema 4D. And if you want to check out more Cinema 4D tutorials, be sure to check out motiontutorials.net where I have all sorts of archived and searchable Cinema 4D tutorials, After Effects, Element 3D. You can get all sorts of updated weekly and even more than weekly tutorials that I put up there. And if you want to get access to these project files or any of my project files, since these ones are kind of simple, you can support the show also on motiontutorials.net by throwing in a couple extra bucks to get access to project files. And if you wanna become a weekly subscriber to the show and get more things like bonus hangouts and all the project files, you can head over to patreon.com slash seanfrangelo where you can support the show in that way. And if you have any questions on this tutorial or anything that you wanna add or reach out to me about, you can check out the Facebook page at facebook.com slash motion tutorials and hit me up on Twitter, I'm at Sean Frangella. I always like talking with other animation experts and VFX artists, new, beginner, all sorts of levels about these tutorials and what's going on with their projects. And be sure to subscribe on YouTube at youtube.com slash Sean Frangella to get weekly tutorials and motion graphics, VFX, and 3D animation updates. And last thing I promise, if you want to check out some other specific tutorials on Cinema 40, be sure to check out some of those thumbnails that just popped up where you can kind of keep learning, learn about feeding animation, new features, and all sorts of new stuff. So click on those thumbnails, keep learning. Thanks for checking this one out and watching the tutorials. I will see you next time. Do you like watching these tutorials and want to see more episodes more often? You can help keep the show going by lending your support on Patreon at patreon.com slash seanfrangella. More importantly, if you want to throw in a couple extra bucks, you can get bonus content like project files used in the tutorials, answers to direct questions, live hangouts for questions, and even request specific tutorial topics for me to use for my next video. Also be sure to subscribe to the show by clicking the subscribe button or visiting the show homepage at youtube.com slash seanfrangella. And if you're hip with social media and have a question about this tutorial, you can find me on Twitter at seanfrangella. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you at the next video.